the internet. Uh, from the IP addresses in the ENP0S8, you can see that this has an IP address of the uh, virtual box uh, network card that, uh, uh, that was configured when you have installed the virtual box. And those IP address uh, ranges are responsible for, uh, for the communication with the uh, host system. So for example, from the host system, you're able to SSH into this uh, virtual machine. So now uh, we'll use the EMP uh, zero S3 card. So let's just go back to the uh, YAML file and enter it into the uh, into the master uh, property and uh, config. As you can see, it is already uh, typed for me here. So we'll move on to configure the uh, the subnets. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look on the our IP address that we will have in here. As you can see, with this is a 10.0.2.15. Uh, so the uh, subnet for us is 10.0.2.0. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, from the uh, net mask, we can see that uh, this is a 24 uh, bit. Uh, mask, so we'll put the slash 24 at the end. Um, now let's configure the range start and range end. As you can see over here, uh, our own IP address is 10.0.2.15. Uh, so for the convenience, uh, so for the convenience and to avoid any uh, IP addresses clashes, we'll change this address in here to start as uh 16. our address is 15 so we'll start with the address from 16 and we'll end this range on the 10.0.2.254 uh, which gives us uh 232 uh, addresses so i think that this will be enough for our testing purposes and a great way uh, for us you can copy this directly from the uh, this broadcast address. This is the gateway and the broadcast address are uh, the same thing almost. Um, so we will leave it like it is in here and we'll exit this, the insert mode and then just press escape and then uh, do colon WQ to save the changes in, in the file and close this. Okay. So now we have edited this file, uh, we, have to, we have to implement it. To do so, uh, we'll use the, uh, the following command, which is my, microcades dot kubectl. So basically we are uh, accessing the uh, kubectl client that, is, uh, that comes with the microcades. And then apply dash f, which means that apply from the file and we'll specify the file Uh, how's that? Ah, it's not working. <laughs> so you just give me a second. Uh, uh, yeah, multis config that yaml. <laughs> copy, paste. And let's try to implement it. Okay, the connection to the server. Okay, that's right. And um, you specify the right host or port. Uh, just let me check. A, uh, just let me quickly take a look on this uh, Motus config file uh, that I have configured correctly. I think so. Uh, Agent, can you see something here that uh, I have misconfigured? I am comparing the file to the one that you have uploaded. Um, uh, yeah, Gulliam, I'll try this. Thank you for this uh, for this command. 
Also, can you use a pseudo for the micro case, maybe? Uh, okay, I, I, I see what, what is the problem. Thank you, thank you, William. Uh, this was really helpful. Uh, Okay, uh, just let me quickly take a look on this. Uh, yeah, maybe inspect. <laughs> mm. Oh, I think there's a lot of more information that I was expecting. Uh, I think we can temporarily do the next step and then you can check this one. Oh, yes, uh, yeah. Um, so basically, uh, the problem is in here that probably we'll just have to start uh, the uh, micro crates. Uh, uh, I'll try also this one. Yeah. So maybe we can switch to Adrian's part and then you can have a look on this bit at the same uh, time. Okay, uh, Adrian, can we move uh, to the, your part and we'll go we back come, here in, in a second, okay? Uh, I'll just uh, figure it out very quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. So. Uh, thanks, Bartos. Uh, uh, I'll stop my screen uh, so you can see it. Yeah. Uh, so now we'll be moving on temporarily to the following step, which is the uh, Webot was to simulation inside the uh, 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 Kubernetes. So before we start this, let's actually refresh a little bit uh, what the 5G era middleware is supposed to to do over here to help us. So I'm starting to share my screen. Um, there, there is a diagram. Uh, hopefully uh, anyone can confirm it that you can see the diagram. Okay. So here is basically the work, the, the flow of control of the 5G era middleware. So, before starting the, the demo for the simulation that we will be going through, I would like to show you how this uh, demo is supposed to integrate within the 5G era product that we are trying to develop over here. So to put into context, uh, the 5G era middleware is gonna be a ROST package that you will be able to download from the ROST official website. Um, what is this middleware? What is this ROS package going to help us with in the robotics field, in the networking field, and so on? So, to put it with a metaphor, the 5G era middleware is like Santa Claus. So, there is a, we are the robots, so we put ourselves in the role of the robot. Um, usually, what happens is a robot has a, some computer and there is a ROS installed on it, and there are some monolithic application running in the robot. Like we can have object recognition, face recognition, we can have the controllers for the motors and so on, and everything is uh, running within the same operating system, usually some Ubuntu system with the ROS uh, framework. So the disadvantage we have with this is that robots itself is a single point of failure. Um, anything can go wrong and there is no distributed uh, or containerized modules for the robot to, to use remotely. So what are we doing over here? Basically, I just said that the 5G middleware is like Santa Claus. So the robot wants something. Imagine the robot uh, is in our room. Um, it needs to perform some critical tasks some task that is kind of dangerous and the robot needs to make sure it, it is able to do it right. So this is where the five-year uh, middleware comes along and where 
our simulation is going to fix it. So let's open the web browser and I will show you the simulation that we will be creating today. So over here, we have opened our web browser and this is the WeBots streaming service. And over right. here we have- Adrian, uh, we are still on the previous screen. Oops. Yeah, that is correct. Let me show again <laughs> the, the screen. Yeah, sorry about that. I believe now you can see the, the web browser. Yes. Yes, we can see it. Yeah, okay, thank you, Renzo. So as we were saying, imagine we are a robot in a little house and the robot needs to perform some critical task. So before doing the, the critical task, because of the characteristics of this task, the robot needs to make sure it can actually do this uh, and succeed. So what is the best way to achieve this? Well, for the robot, this is as simple as considering, let's do a simulation of what I am supposed to do, given that I know uh, the map of the environment and I know the, the environment itself, right? So what usually happens is that if that you want to run the simulation in the robot, it will take a lot of resources from the robot um, the resources of the system are limited always, right? So what we are achieving over here is we would put the simulation somewhere else. So going back to our diagram, we are a robot that needs help. And the help request we are going to issue to the 5G middleware is that I need a simulation with these parameters. The parameters is the word file, with the configuration of the robot, we have a turtle ball three. And what we are going to do is we will issue a hub request to the 5G era. The 5G era uh, will authenticate the robot. So uh, if the robot has the correct credentials, it will access the middleware and the middleware will say, okay, let me see, you need to create a simulation and I will check inside my topology of the cloud system, uh, if there is any available resources or, of, or if I have an image of the simulation to help you. So basically there is a task planner, a resource planner that will check all the topology of the network system that is available in the middleware. Like I have uh, some uh, edge nodes, some clouds, and I can figure out what is the best placement for you. Uh, and if I have the simulation image. So what is going to happen is that the uh, task planner will say, okay, I think I'm going to provide you with a container with the simulation in this placement, in the edge, in this edge one, for example. So after this, the, this request will be sent to the OSM and the OSM is responsible for instantiating this deployment which is this deployment is gonna be a network function. In this case, it's gonna be a Kubernetes network function. So this is why we are always talking about Kubernetes and Docker, in this case, Kubernetes. So what we are deploying in this case is a KNF, a Kubernetes network function. So what will happen is that uh, this resource will be instantiated and the 5G era will come back to the robot and say, okay, here is your present. Here is what you actually, you wanted to have. So I give it to you. What we are achieving over here is a distributed system with a lot of um, redundancy. So the container we are running in the cloud is managed by the Kubernetes. So the Kubernetes will make sure the health status of the container is perfect. If something goes wrong, the container can be reinitialize and we are putting outside of the robot some resources that the robot may need somehow. So getting all these things out of the robot to do it somewhere else in a distributed manner, it will be very helpful for the robot. Uh, additionally, it can also be the case that the robot doesn't know how to do this. So we code our robot, we put them some algorithms but what can happen is that the robot may need something else that we don't have installed in the robot. So we'll go to the 5G middleware and say, okay, do you have some sort of, uh, I don't know, 